in a land called Hollywood, in a place called Acme, one celebrity will find themselves with the opportunity of a lifetime, the chance to play their dream role. The only catch is, there is no set, there is no budget, and there is no script. Will this be a dream role or a nightmare? Find out tonight in our star-studded presentation of Celebrity Improv Mashup. Starring Robert Covarrubias. based on the dream role of our celebrity. Second, we are going to create a movie based on a random log line. And third, we're going to take those two things and mash them together seamlessly and perfectly so everything makes sense in the end. <laughs> sort of. All right, uh, obviously this show is completely improvised. Uh, we have no scripts and we have no set except for this gigantic green screen behind me. Which, which we like to call the Acme Matrix. Yes, it is a magical technology that every local weather person has uh, that allows us to... <laughs> oh, yes, there's a cold front coming in. That allows us to travel to any time or place, limited, of course, by whatever our technicians happen to have in their technological folders. Okay, for example, I could be in a blazing fire. Ah! Or a freezing blizzard. <laughs> I, I love the audience participation that's going on right now, I have to say. It really helps. Or I could be surrounded by beautiful women. <laughs> or, or helping you get money from the government. <laughs> I'm not sure. All right. Uh, anyway, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we couldn't have celebrity improv mashup if we didn't have a celebrity. So let me introduce you to Drew Seeley! <laughs>
concentrate when you're churning. I'm sorry, Paul. I just don't know if it's a good decision for you to cause problems with the British. Nobody loves a rebel. <laughs> How am I causing problems with the British? Well, you were speaking of throwing tea into the bay. <laughs> Perhaps Willard Starbucks will come along and help. Paul. Yes. No one loves a rebel. No one remembers their name. No one cares about rebels. The plain people get the fame. But I am a lonely bellsmith. I work with silver and stuff. <laughs> I wanted to be a librarian, but father said that's not enough. <laughs> so rebel in your mind and rebel in your heart. But keep it simple, honey, it's my favorite part. Don't go out killing and causing strife. I like the simple <laughs> But the British are coming to take all our guns. No, the British are coming. And look, here they come. <laughs> As you can see by my completely authentic outfit, I am a high-ranking British officer. We've seen you. We've seen you around the village. Have you now? I heard merriment and joy and song here. What is there to be so merry about, you Yankee rebel scouts? <laughs> <laughs> the Empire cannot keep us down forever. How dare you speak that way of our king and queen? Do not speak to my wife in such a manner. Hands off me, rebel! My God, man, your teeth! Yes, it's a good thing I am also a, also a dentist. Your teeth are perfect and straight. I can't trust you. What shall we do about this lack of trust in my household? Well, how do you hurt somebody the most? You hurt the one they love. Betsy Ross. <laughs> <laughs> it'll, uh, 
it's historically accurate. And uh, yeah, at a certain point, uh, dramatically appropriate, Paul Revere will arrive and, and try to uh, rally the troops. So uh, let's go now there. Action! Let's see. Yes, George. <laughs> You're such an accomplished sewer. Do you like this little thing I'm putting together? It matches your eyes. Mm. Yes, it does match my eyes. My eyes have stars and stripes in them. I think your stripes are particularly fine. Betsy, you randy goat. <laughs>
Massachusetts? Yes, it's where a lonely silversmith lives. It's out of the way. No one will see us landing there. Arr. And when we sneak up <laughs> upon that coast, oh, 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 their pants will be down, and we will take them from the rear. Arr. I don't want you to get too excited. But, Queen, the excitement triggers my porphyria-induced madness, and when that is released, I'm horny, baby. In that case, stand up! <laughs> do it to us! <laughs> Take off that shirt. 
I don't think that's how you play Indian. And I can't help you. Listen to the man. He knows what he's talking about. So what is your name? My name is Magua. 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 My family, the Revere's, we're not quite sure what to do. We'd like to help. help. I know your people haven't had much success with warding evil off, but... <laughs> you you have... are the evil. You come to our land. You drive us west of the Mestetsepe. <laughs> you try to come back to the coastal areas, and you drive us back again. And now you want me to dress you like us? Now wait! Now wait! You haven't had much, much success. We keep on pushing and pushing you back, and you keep on saying, sure, that sounds like a great idea. Well, maybe, just maybe, <laughs> these British are coming, and maybe we shouldn't let them push us back. Maybe we should stand up and say, you go back to England. Is this your child? <laughs> you have raised her terrible. <laughs> Listen, what? you think we're evil? You ain't seen nothing yet. No, you've not seen nothing yet. No, you've not seen nothing yet. We no, won't. you've not seen nothing. Oh, you're not. <laughs> I think I have an idea, good man. I have crafted these amazing silver and copper pipes. <gasps> silver and copper what? Pipes to smoke? Pipes for super smoke. Ooh. Which you may be interested in. We could perhaps set some kind of a trade. Right. Costumes for pipes. I will give you some skins that you can wear. And I, will, and I will bring the tobacco to smoke in the pipe. <laughs> I think we have a deal. Agreed. Agreed. All right. You. All right, fade out. Fade out. <laughs> Your 
breath and horrible teeth. <laughs> yes. Yes. Last time, well, yeah. the king's speaking now. <laughs> well, if I was on your land, perhaps I would listen. This is my land! I beg to differ! Really? Really? Where's your flag then, boy? I see the English flag called the English flag flying over these colonies. What's your name, boy? My name is Paul Revere. Well, Mr. Paul Revere, unless you want to end up like another colonial boy by the name of Johnny Tremaine, I suspect you should nail. And I said nail. I took play. You heard me. Hi, Daddy. Were you getting ready to kneel in front of these two people? Of course not, number three. Never. I would never do that. <laughs> I might have shot somebody and possibly started a war. Oops. Well, just to make sure he gets me need business, rape the girl, Redcoat. No. <laughs> Run! <laughs> Don't you rape her. Don't you dare rape her. Rape her, rape her. Not, not a good idea. Listen here, my wife is, Listen here, Queen Charlotte. That's my name. You look like a hornet. <gasps> Two can play that game. Revere, you look like a queer. Oh, <laughs> say that in my good ear. I, I, I'm out of words, I fear. <laughs> Sir? Here. Sam Adams, bring me a beer. The war of words! The war of words! The war of words! Words, words, words. Darling. Oh, That's right, get the gun. No, no, it was some heavy duty raping. That's right. Get on your knees. Oh, my God. Hey, The only thing that's getting ripped around here is a red coat. Yeah! Damn these Americans and their firearms! Paul, I've got the gun. I've got bells to ring. You ring those bells across the land. Ring them, Daddy! We all take the wind. If you do this, this means war. There's no turning back. Then war it is. Fade out. Fade out. All right. Will the war ravage America? Will Paul Revere ring all of those bells? Will the king and queen back get back to England? Will this get at all historically accurate? We'll find out a little bit later, because now we're moving on to part two of Celebrity Improv Mashup. So, uh, Drew, we're going to give you a little bit of a break for this section, uh, but we might ask you for some, su some suggestions. So I'm going to find a random log line in this book. So someone in the audience behind me, yell out, stop. 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 All right, left or right? Right. I heard right. Uh, say stop. Stop. OK, great. So we are about to see a, m a musical review featuring uh, war and death and a Belgian balladeer, Jacques Brel. <laughs> <laughs> it's and stop. Similar? It's very similar. It is very similar. All right, I'll go one up, and that is a, um, uh, it's based on a bestseller uh, character's mm, slickly made romantic drama, empty-headedly entertaining, and thus superior to the theatrical version. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, it's a uh, 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 slickly made romantic drama, empty headily entertaining, and thus superior to the theatrical version. Um, and uh, yeah, it was made, and this came out in 1981, so yeah. right. we'll see how that works. All right, so uh, let's start off. Uh, let's see. Uh, now we'll start off in a, um, uh, outside of a, a house, and there's a man and a woman there. That sounds good. Outside of a rural house. And action. Gwen, I'm glad you got my message and came immediately. <laughs> of course, Peter. I could never stay away from you. When you called, it made me think 
think about those good times back in college. You know, when we used to hang out on the quad and party with the Alpha Delta Alphas. I remember those times as if they were yesterday. <gasps> but Gwen, I am not here to dig up old memories. Oh? It's something current, something that's happening right now. Really? Something that I need to ask you about. Okay. <laughs> Gwen, you remember that night three weeks ago? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't with you, but I remember it quite clearly. That's the problem. You were, you were with me, Gwen. <gasps> no! Wait, take it easy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that you were intoxicated, and I took advantage of you. I'm not proud to say that, Gwen, but I had my way with you. It's funny, through all the ale, everything was a haze there in that bar. I looked up for Gwen. my pint. Gwen! What? Oh, hey! I'm sorry. Hi, I'm Gwen's husband, Jonathan. Gwen, I just wanted to come and let you know the Historical Recreation Society called You Don't Have an Event Today After All. Oh. <laughs> well, here I threw everything else in the laundry. Oh. Wow. Darn it. Yeah. I didn't catch your name. It's Scott. Peter. Peter. Yeah. And your name is? <laughs> <laughs> just said it. It's Jonathan, Peter. I'm sorry, Jonathan, my head is filled with guilt and shame. No, it's not. It's not filled with anything like that. Gwen. You don't have any sort of guilt or shame about anything. I raped your wife. No. <laughs> or that, it was rape. She, did, no, she didn't. I was just drunk. I just, I, but I wanted to. I, <laughs> she didn't say no. <laughs> she didn't say no, so I proceeded to make love to her. Jonathan, you've got to believe me. <laughs> This man, I... Oh, okay, now, we cut to, uh, we cut to three weeks earlier, three weeks earlier at Club Xanadu, where, uh, where there was a bunch of song and people were dancing, like a disco, and, and Jonathan, uh, Peter's there, and he meets Gwen for the first time, and we see what that sort of night happens. We're going to do a on that. <laughs> gets crazier as it goes forward. Fair. 
confessed that your real name was Gwen. Oh, darn it. And I screamed your name in return. You don't remember that? You don't remember that? I do. I do remember it, but I can't. I can't remember it. I must bury it deep, deep within my heart and soul. I must forget it. This must be nothing but, but a memory. I, I must think of it almost as, as if it was a rape, as if, it, as if I, I could just block it out, block out the memory, and then I won't ruin my husband or my relationship or my family or everything that I've got. I must, I must not love you. I, I must not love you. I gotta go. Fade out, fade out. Now we return to the scene from which we flashed back. That is, when you're talking to the camera, it's very disorienting. It's, we are seeing when Peter first told Gwen. Yeah, we got it. We started. The place where we started. Stands there. All right. And action, action, action. What? You and you raped my wife. I well, think. you were drunk. And you, it was consensual. She agreed <laughs> to the role playing, and it was a rape play acting <laughs> game that we agreed to. Honey, when? Yes. Don't take my hand in a tender way, <laughs> Gwen. Look at me. Do you love this man, Peter? I do. I do love him, Jonathan. I love him more than I've ever loved you. I'm sorry. <laughs> I wanted to, I wanted you to be the one. I wanted you to be the man that would fulfill my life, but I'm afraid you're not good enough. Wait, let me ask that again. Gwen, do you really want to ruin my life and break my heart and possibly drive me to suicide for this? No. Ha! Well, huh. I'm happy for you. Really, I am. It's just something that I wanted to tell her to get the record straight that if she's carrying the child, it's, well, it, it may not be yours. <laughs> Maybe mine. Fit up, fit up, fit up. Fit up. <laughs> so it is 1981, and so uh, Ronald Reagan just passed this law that lets Indians gamble in California. So now we go back to uh, Jonathan and his home life on the reservation where he's in a casino where he's lamenting about the problems of finding a woman and all that good stuff and love his life. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I made a big mistake. I tell you, Tony, you should have dated that nice Shoshone girl from the other reservation. I know, Shoshones, Chickawas. Sometimes you just want a little bit of the white flesh. <laughs> Do you want your fucking drink or what? <laughs> Loose sluts in town, my ass. <laughs> Hi, Peter. Hey, uh, Gabriella. You're looking good in those moccasins. Thank you. My mother made them. <laughs> That's hot. You know, about last night, uh, yeah, where were you? I waited and waited. I went into town, and uh, I think I got into a lot of trouble. Sorry. Ooh. Trash. <laughs> what kind of trouble? I laid with a white woman who was married. <laughs> <laughs> an 
Indian I'm a Mohawk but when despite my pebble when and I had a sexual <laughs> pieces of silver and make them things to drink with and things to do. <laughs> poor man. I have 16 children. <gasps> wow. After wife number two. Hmm. And since the war hasn't started yet, that's in the future, but I have ESP and all sorts of other things and I know what's going to happen soon. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear Paul. I read your words. She reads my words. I see what kind of life you had. Gosh, it doesn't seem so bad. If you knew the men in my life, well, they don't treat me so swell either. Future Historical Society lady. <laughs> She's making love to who? <laughs> who? Who could ever cheat on a man like this? A man that will go on to be one of the 
the most important gentlemen in the history of America. Who could ever treat you terrible? Who could ever break your heart? All right, fade out. We go back to the past and we see yes, our man is there. And we find out he confronts the man, uh, the man who was uh, with his wife. And action. for the skins. You are welcome for that, Mr. Revere. <laughs> I have a favor to ask you. Anything, my brother, anything, yes. Last I was here, there was a child, a large woman child. <laughs> <laughs> number three? I do not know her number. All I, all I know is she had a large voice and was very, very Talkative. My wife! No, no. It was one of your children. Oh, a female child. Do you recall her? <laughs> yes. How dare you come in for my child? I, what? After we've lain together. That's right, Paul. We've lain together. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't want to tell you this way. You and you and I was drunk. She got me drunk. He made me do things I did not want to do. He kept saying that the white man raped him, and I wanted to show him what it felt like when a white woman did it. <laughs> but why would you do this to me after all we've been through? Oh, Paul. No, I want an answer. Why? Why don't you ask the future? <laughs> I can't tell you today. I guess I got a few screws loose. Cause I don't know what to say. Oh, dear future lady, oh, what did I do wrong? Why did she lay with this Native American man and his Indian song? What did I do? Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Ladies and 